Welcome to the new basics webinar series. You know, we started this series um, because even after 35 years of doing this work, we're still innovating. We're still learning from all of you and others all across the United States who we're working with. And we want to, as we're developing new content and new innovation, uh, we want to keep making sure that we can offer it to our network so that we can help you unleash your full potential um, and enable organizations and communities to move forward. So today, as you know, is about the uh, Turning Outward Practice Tracker, which we'll get into in a moment. In the chat, um, if you haven't printed it out already, you can find the tracker. You'll want to print it out because you're going to want to use it. Um, uh, or download it at least. You, we're going to use it during this session. Um, so take a look at it if you if you haven't downloaded it or printed it out already. Okay, quick word about this new basics webinar series and then and then we're going to jump into it. This is the third of four uh, webinars that we're doing. Uh, the first one was on the mantras of public life, which enable you to, uh, to help drive the work that you're doing. The second was on the North Star, which enables you to guide your efforts. It's kind of a roadmap to guide your efforts over time. The fourth one, which um, will be on January 9th at 1 p.m., so mark your calendars to that, January 9th at 1 p.m., will be on the key elements to staying grounded. How is it that you stay grounded in the practice of turning outward? as you do this work over time. Today is the third of fourth. Today, we're going to be focused on the Turning Outward Practice Tracker. All of this is on our website under the new Basics webinar series. And when you go there, you'll not only find the recordings of these webinars, but you'll find other information and knowledge uh, that corresponds to the webinar to help you gain a deeper understanding of the content that we are covering. All right, so today, uh, as you all know, uh, our public life, our community life, our nation is, I think a lot of people, no matter who you, you vote for, no matter who you support, most people I encounter across the country believe that we're not moving in a good direction. We're not moving in a more equitable, a more fair and just, a more inclusive and hopeful direction. And the question is, in these divisive times, how is it that you can stay focused on what truly matters to people in the community? And how is it that you can stay focused on what matters to them and strengthen the civic culture of your community uh, at the same time so that we can actually create impact that makes a difference in people's lives and grow a greater sense of civic faith, a greater sense of belief in ourselves and in one another that we matter and that we can actually come together and get things done. My sense, the Institute's sense after doing this work for 35 years is if you share those goals, which I suspect you do because you're here today, then we've got to be turned outward, right? We've got to have the community in our line of sight. We have to have people in our line of sight. And turning outward, as many of you know, is first and foremost an orientation and a mindset and then it's attached to a series of practices that the Institute teaches. This tracker, this turning outward practice tracker can help you not only be turned outward, but it can help you also grow in the practice of turning outward over time. That's the beauty of it. It's both a check on where you are, and in a sense, it's aspirational about where you can be, about how you can continue to grow your practice. And for those of you who have been using, I see some of you, I know some of you have been using our practice for years. This is a really good tool to, to help you um, stay turned outward and grow in your practice of being turned outward. And for those of you who are new, first of all, welcome. And second of all, uh, this tool is for you as well. You can immediately start to apply most of it. Some of it, you may need to look at some stuff on our website to familiarize yourself uh, with some of the ideas I'm gonna be covering today. But for the most part, um, you can definitely get started using this tracker this afternoon, right after, right after this webinar. All right, you all with me here? You in the right place today? All right, so let's get going. So in the spirit of the Institute's work, 
uh, for those of you who've been with us for a while, you know we like to create two lists that are juxtaposed to each other because it enables us to get a sense of where we are really quickly. Um, so I'm going to ask you first, and let's just create a list together. This is going to require you to come off mute. It's a relatively small group. Please don't put your responses in the chat. Just come off mute. Let us hear your voice. So the first question is, what does it look like when we're turned inward in doing this work in communities? What does it look like when we're turned inward? Some quick responses. Let's just generate a list together. No growth. Okay, no growth. Thank you. What else? Trust. I'm sorry? Distrust. Distrust, okay. Isolated. Isolated, great, what else? Very little communication. Little communication, thank you. Organization first. Organization first, all right. What else? No seat at the big table. No seat at the big table, okay. How about the little table? <laughs> or the Lack of table. awareness. I'm sorry? Lack of awareness of what's going on outside your organization. Okay, great. Lack of awareness. What else? Contracted. Pull, pulled in. Pulled in. Okay. All right. So what does it look like, conversely, if being turned inward is no growth, distrust, a sense of isolation, uh, very little communication, organization first, a lack of awareness pulled inward. What does being turned outward look like if we're working in a community? Conversation. Okay, great. Conversation. Radiating influence. I'm sorry? Radiating influence. Radiating influence. Nice. Okay, what influence. else? Got it. All right. What else? Better it's understanding. Just... I'm sorry? Better understanding. Better understanding, okay. Relevant. Relevant to whom? To the community. Okay. And successful uh, collaborations. Okay, collaborations. All right. Exposure or lack thereof. Okay. Or, Exposure to what? Uh it, it, it makes you vote. Okay. Great. Unity. Unity. Unity, all right. Contribution. Contribution, love it, thank you. All right, anything else? Togetherness. I'm sorry? Iona? Uh, togetherness. Togetherness, okay, and then someone else was gonna jump in? Recharging. Recharging, okay, great. So we started with this list of being turned inward, right? You no know, growth, distrust, isolation, pulling inward, contracting. Mm -hmm. We said now to be outward, it's rooted in conversation, radiating influence, uh, a better understanding, more relevant to the community, a sense of togetherness, contribution, recharging. Here's the question. What, why is it so hard to stay turned outward, especially today? Fear. Okay, what else? Norms. I'm sorry? Norms. Norms of? Uh, uh, people don't want to change. They want to stay with the normal. OK. Change. What else? System itself. OK. Great. Thank you. What else? Polarization. All right. Cynicism masquerading as wisdom. Whoa. Um, <laughs> that's good. That sounds like a wise thing to say. All right. <laughs> Experienced um, backlash. Experienced backlash. Okay. Um, Anything else? There's a weariness out there. A weariness. Okay, great. So let's turn to this, in this, uh, this tracker then. And 
um, before we throw it up on the screen, uh, you know, we actually renamed it recently. It was the Turning Outward Practice Scorecard. And as we were using it with folks, they began to believe that they were scoring themselves and it actually created a greater sense of weariness than a sense of possibility. So we, spirit of innovation and learning, we literally just before this webinar renamed it. So for those of you who may have seen it as a scorecard, it's now called a tracker, right? And the idea here is that when you use it, it's not intended to be judgmental. It's not intended to be punitive. It's not intended to make you feel as though you're operating in a deficit. It's not, a, it's not intended to make you feel as though somehow you haven't done something right. It's not intended to make you feel as though um, you're losing ground, right? It's not intended for any of those things. What it's intended for is for us to be able to track a sense of where are we with the belief that we there's lots of room for us to always improve, to become better, to do better, um, and that the more we focus on our aspirations about <clears throat> not only who we are, but who we can become, the more we can begin to, in a way, sweep away some of that weariness and gain a sense of possibility of what we can do mm. and who we can be. You with me here? So that's the intent. That's the intent of this tool. It has a rating system, which you've seen it. It's a rating system that we developed with citizens when 20 years ago, when we got a very large grant to create a political conduct barometer to gauge the political conduct of citizens, the news media, and public officials during elections. And uh, what we did is we didn't want to have a, a system, a quantitative system, which made us feel as though we were scoring ourselves, but an aspirational system. So if you look along the top, you can see that it starts with lip service, meaning we say we're doing it, but we're not. It goes to business as usual, meaning that nothing really has changed. It goes to starting to improve that we're actually starting to do something. It then goes to making real progress and it goes to, I've got this, right? And so, thanks Tristan. So um, again, download this if you haven't downloaded it yet, because we'll we'll be using this. We can pull the slide down now, but the, the rating system is intended to give us a sense of possibility uh, that we can keep going. So let me just run through these factors in each statement. Then I'm gonna ask you to look at this and use it. And then we're gonna jump into some small groups and have you talk about where you are and where you wanna be. Um, so does everyone have a copy of this in front of them? All right, great. So this is gonna echo what you all mentioned in terms of the tension between being turned inward and the need to be turned outward in order to do this work. So it starts with knowing what matters to people. We know that this is the basic building block of creating trust in communities of people believing that they're seen and heard, that they matter, and it's a down payment on growing civic faith in a community. So the first notion of, of turning outward in terms of the practice is, do we know what matters to people in terms of their shared aspirations and concerns, right? The second one is, are we using public knowledge, the knowledge we gain from a community, to reframe what matters to people, to enlist allies, and to make intentional decisions for taking action. For those of you who have been through our lab, you recognize that as the power of public knowledge, right? The powers of public knowledge. This is really important because we know that our ability to use public knowledge, the knowledge we gain from a community to reframe the public discussion in terms of what matters to people, to use that public knowledge to enlist allies to take action, and then to use that public knowledge to generate strategies that actually reflect what matters to people, that that's all really critical to catalyzing action and growing action over time in a community, right? It's gotta be rooted in what matters to people. Otherwise there's another disconnect between what we're doing and people in our community. Third, are we discerning and diagnosing the community stage? Now, 
For those of you who have been through our work, you know this as community rhythms or the five stages of community life. For those who haven't been through our work, you can go to our website and find this framework and read about it. But here's the thing. This framework is rooted in we've got to take communities where they are, not where we wish them to be. And every community is in one of these five stages. Most communities in America are in one of the first two and a half stages. Most strategies in communities in America are geared for the fourth or fifth stage. So our strategies are literally misaligned with where our communities are starting. Each strategy, each stage has fundamentally different actions you would take and things that you would do and signs of progress that you would look for in order to make progress. So you really wanna know what stage you're in in order to know where to start the work in your community. So that's why that, that's so important to the turning outward practice. We've gotta take people and communities where they are, not where we wish they were. Next, knowing who to run with. What allies and partners in the community so that we can accelerate our work? What we know in doing this work for 35 years is a lot of the partners we run with, we choose because we think they give us credibility, because we've been partnering with them for 10 or 20 years, because they make us feel comfortable, because it's convenient, because we believe they're going to get us more money, because we like them. That doesn't mean that they're going to be good partners. And it doesn't mean that they're ready to roll. So the question here is, do we know who to run with so that we can actually accelerate and deepen change? Because we want to create impact in communities, right? We want to engender civic faith. We've got to have the right partners. Everyone is not the right partner. Next, actively working in the sweet spot, which means are we addressing what matters to people and at the same time strengthening the underlying conditions of the community? right, the civic culture of the community. The reason why this is important is because what we know is that if we simply focus on strategies, programs, and initiatives, we already have tons of those, we're not creating the change we need. What we know is the play in most communities is we've got to strengthen the underlying conditions of communities, the norms, the networks, the trust, the relationships, those, the layers of leaders that we need, the catalytic organizations, right? And so we've got to strengthen those as we're taking action through programs, initiatives, and strategies. Next, are we making wins and progress visible to people in the community? This is important for your practice because what we've realized in doing this work is that most of the people we work with are so busy, they don't even recognize they're creating progress. They think they're falling farther and farther behind. And the only time they think progress matters is at the end of their work except two things. One is the work never ends. And second, you're creating progress all along the way. So if we can make that progress visible along the way, it will, it will bat, combat our weariness, our sense that we're not making a difference, our sense that we don't have the agency to make a difference. But you do, we do, and you are making a difference. So we created a little tool called Making the Invisible Visible, right? It's on our website. But here's the thing, in your tracker, you want to be gauging whether or not you're actually making visible the progress that you're making. That's the trick here, right? You wanna be calibrating, engaging whether or not that's happening on a regular routine, everyday basis. It only gives you hope when you share those stories of progress, it gives other people in your communities hope as well. Okay, next actively recalibrating efforts based on what's being learned together about the community and people's shared work. We call this civic learning, right? It's learning that we do together, not only about ourselves, but about the work we're doing in the community. Why is this important? Because a lot of the things that we do don't always go the way we want them to go. Because the conditions in the community change. Because the people we're working with change, right? And we have to calibrate what, whether or not the things that we're doing are actually working. And we have to make discernments about that. And then we have to make choices and judgments about whether or not we have to recalibrate what we're doing. Look, we all want to be effective. In school, in graduate school, I was taught just build your plan and stick with it. 
and keep your head down. Our approach is exactly the opposite. I wasted a lot of money at that school. Our approach is exactly the opposite. It's keep your head up, see what's going on, recalibrate when you need to, make changes so you can have the impact you need and grow the civic faith that we all need, right? So the only way to do that though, is you've got to track whether or not in your turning outward practice, you're actually actively recalibrating. Okay, next, a few more. Act within my sphere of influence to get started and stay in motion. Look, in today's world, none of us are gonna change things on our own and nothing's gonna happen overnight. We all know that. The question is, as someone mentioned earlier in the turned outward list, what's our contribution? What's our contribution? And in order to do that, we have to know where our sphere of influence is. Where can we take action and have an impact? Where can we find other partners to run with? Where can we have some, where do we have some influence already as opposed to just hitting our head against the wall, right? So our practice says, start where you can get started. Start where you have a sphere of influence, right? And get in motion. That's gonna build your sense of possibility. It's gonna build your confidence. It's gonna build your sense of agency. It's gonna build your sense of hope and other people's hope. That's what this is about, right? Which leads us to the next one. Unleash a chain reaction with others and spread it like a positive contagion throughout the community, right? So for those of you who've been through our lab, you know our work is rooted in our goal is to catalyze and unleash a chain reaction, which translated means you start with a small action and you grow ripple effects over time. And as those ripple effects grow, they touch more and more people, they activate other people. And before you know it, the work is spreading like a contagion. If you want proof of that, read the book Unleashed. It's written by some guy I've never met, but it's worth a good read and it'll tell you stories about real communities that did this work. And most of the changes they created happened long after the Harwood Institute stopped working with them directly because they unleashed a chain reaction and it spread like a positive contagion. So you wanna be focused on, am I not simply taking a single action, but am I focused on how I can unleash this chain reaction of ripple effects and other actions with other people? which means you got to keep your head up, stay turned outward, look for new opportunities, be open to serendipity, right? Lastly, am I staying true to what I value and what I stand for? So the last one's about you. Am I staying true to what I value and what I stand for? This is really critically important because we know that this work happens at the nexus between who you are as an individual and who you are as a civic actor. That's where the meaning is. That's where the power comes from. That's where your sense of motivation and urgency comes from. You don't wanna lose that nexus point. That means staying true to who you are and what you value while you do this work, while you're turned outward, right? All right, everyone with me? Does that make sense? So those are the key factors. So what we wanna do is ask you to look at this. And in the next minute or so, I'm gonna give you a minute to do this. Look at the tracker and see, don't worry about the rating system right now. Who cares? Don't worry about it. Just look at the tracker and mark the ones that you believe you're making progress on. And if you mark all eight, I'd probably kind of want to come visit you and see whether or not it's really happening. So please don't use that as the standard. Just This is just for yourself. You're not going to show it to anyone. I'm not going to ask you to show it to anyone. So this is just a chance for you to reflect on your own. Just take a minute to do this and see how you're doing. Mark the ones you think you're making progress on. And then mark the ones that... Uh, you believe you need to make more progress on, right? You with me? Mark the ones you want to make more progress on.
Just give me a thumbs up when you're ready. Thank you. All right. Good. Great. I see some of you nodding. Is that a thumbs up? All right. So here's what we're going to do. When you go, I'm going to ask you to, you're going to jump into small groups. There's going to be two to three of you in each group. Do a very quick introduction because you're going to have about 10 minutes. And what I'd like you to discuss uh, are two questions. What, the first one is, what one or two areas, not five, but one, one or two areas of the practice do you feel like you're making real progress in? Or any progress in? What one or two areas are you making progress in? And then second, based on where you are, where would you like to make more progress? Like, is there one or two other areas or even in the areas where you're already making progress, you can repeat those if you'd like. You'd like to make more progress in those. That's that's fine. What one or two areas would you like to make additional progress in? Don't name all eight of these factors. That's too much to handle at once, right? We want to narrow it down to something that's actionable, doable and achievable, right? And the more progress you make, the more progress you're going to make. Okay, everyone got the two questions? All right, Emna, here we go. Uh, I'll see you in 10 minutes. Okay, welcome back, everyone. Um, I'd like to say, is everyone back? But if you're not back, you'd never know whether or not, you know, you wouldn't hear me. So mm -hmm. it's not really a germane question. But anyway, welcome back. Um, all right, so let's just jump into this. As you know, this this webinar is designed to go an hour because we want to be respectful of your time. So I'm going to keep us moving along. And as you add in your comments now, um, uh, try to make them uh, brief. You can come off mute. You can put them in the chat. Um, so how did you, what did you notice uh, about where you are on the, the practice practice tracker? I guess I'll say that um, as someone who very much is like, oh, I have to get an A, um, it was it was very helpful to tackle the exercise from just like, where do you see some some progress and, and where is more progress needed? Um, and there were places where they overlapped and that that felt okay and even kind of encouraging, like, okay, we're we just need to keep going. Hey, thanks, Pam. Thanks for starting us off. And I really like that comment. Anyone else? What do you know about where you are? Um, oops. I'm sorry, I think I'm on mute. Oh, you're on. I want to go ahead. Can you hear me? Go ahead. Yes, um, I, I have some highs and lows, I guess I can say. I think that uh, uh, trying to be more visible uh, to the community, well, I would say more acting within my sphere of uh, influence to get started. Um, of course, the last one, staying true to what I value and what I stand for, I think that's at the top. Okay. Um, and then uh, knowing who to run with, trying to get that. Okay, let me hold, let me hold you there. Um, let me pull some other folks in. What else did you, how about some others? What did you notice about where you are? I think for a project that's going on in our area, it's finding the partners and allies that will help move it forward. Great, and what's it gonna take for you to be able to do that? Turn outward, I guess, public or community conversations. Yeah. Okay. Else, where are you? Rich, I thought it was interesting that um, all three of us mentioned staying true to what I value and what I stand for. And um, I, I think one of the things that I walked away just from that small group discussion is the fact that this process 
allows you to maintain who you are. You you kind of bring who you are to the table alongside of other people who also are maintaining who they are and, and you work together. And so the, the process in and of itself maintains that value uh, among individuals, but yet certainly looks for, as we talked about, the common aspirations as well. Yeah, that's a great comment. Thanks, John. You know, it's actually interesting if I can just build on that. What these 10 factors ask you to do is to become more of yourself, right? For us to do these 10 things, we each have to show up, right? We can't hide. We can't pretend. We can't assume someone else is going to do it. These are all things we can do, but to do them, we're going to have to step forward, make ourselves visible, lean in, and make things happen, which all requires, John, to your point, to, to not only stay true to ourselves, but to become more of ourselves while we're actually joining with others, which is an interesting thing in today's society. Any other thoughts about where you are or, or where you'd like to focus moving forward? I think just um, realizing that you can be very local about it and very small about it and it's and you still get somewhere oh, and how does that make you feel uh good um wishing i had kind of thought about this a little earlier but um yeah but good that it's achievable things are things are achievable right, so does that make you feel like there's a greater sense of possibility or less uh, less sense of possibility oh greater greater because little, lots of little things can happen. Right. Okay. Never too late. Never too late. Right. Um, how about someone else? Where Where are you, or what would you like to focus on? Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, for me, it's it's more of a regrounding. Um, you know, after digging out after all the years, you know, the up unsettledness of the last few years of being closed, of having staff decimated. Um, this is coming back to us to allow us to re focus to ground ourselves back into um, looking outside the library again, looking outside into our community. And as we are plotting ways to go forward, how do we bring the community into that discussion? Um, so this is this has been great for refocusing. So Barb, how does it feel coming out of COVID? You're in a public library, correct? Mm -hmm. How does it feel to get regrounded, to be regrounded? How does that make you feel? Oh, much better. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, we felt just, you know, floundering for so long. I mean, it was almost a grieving process because we lost so much st staff. Um, unfortunately for our organization, the, it was an opportunity for the council to cut part-time staff and saying, hey, you don't need them anymore. Um, and uh, we lost a lot of people and not rehired after reopening. And it was a grieving process for the staff and we were you know, trying to get things back and okay, we're going to be just like we were. And, you know, you can't do that with 11 people when you used to do it with 31. And it, it, yeah, so it is so much better to focus and think, let's get ourselves steered, up, steered a little better going forward. Right. So um, one of the things I take many things from what you're saying, but one of the things I take for everyone on the call is that for those of us who are coming out of, you know, we all came out of COVID and we thought, oh, it's over, or at least the worst is over, except when we looked up, we realized, no, actually, we're just getting started. And we're weary, we're tired, we're worn out. And so one of the things, Barb, that I think you're instructing us on, which I think is really great, is that this tracker can help us reground ourselves and the more regrounded we feel, the more we can lift off, right? And it's such an important thing that you're pointing out. Let's get one or two other quick comments and then then we'll we'll pivot. Other thoughts about where this, what this makes you think about, where you landed on it, how it makes you feel moving forward. Okay, I feel like um, I didn't know I had a sphere of influence. <laughs> I, I, I'm in a sort of odd situation and I'm having to uh, reframe um, the, some of the inward outward because it's a it's 
I'm more looking at a staff and an organization, not not the out outward community. So um, I was like, oh yeah, I, I'm kind of growing into that. That uh, the executive committee does have a sphere of influence, and um, let's go ahead and use it where where it would be helpful. Right, and when you do that, so you can use this to say. Actually, I was just with some organizations yesterday where we were talking about that your organization, your community in that case may be your staff. Yes. Well, it's the membership of the uh, organization. Yeah. We don't have a staff. It's sort of mom and pop. We have one staff. So, well, we're volunteers. Let me put it that way. It's a nonprofit. Yeah. So it can be your membership. It can be a network. Membership. Right. Right. And so... The thing is, when you think about this as a sphere of influence and you take that initial step, what we know is if you use this work, that's what catalyzes and unleashes the larger chain reaction. And then your sphere of influence keeps growing. Yeah, it's very helpful. Thank you. Thanks for the comment. Last one, one of the comment, quick comment, no pressure, but just quick comment on what this made you think, where it leaves you, how it makes you feel about things. I don't know how related this is, but I got Barb English's uh, note to grief. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So uh, thanks, Tom. So actually, I think, Tom, you were at our summit. We started the the whole summit with the word grief. And um, One of the things about, if you go all the way to the top about knowing what matters to people is that in the process of knowing what matters to people, you will come to understand some of the things they might be grieving. And in today's environment, that's of critical importance because if we short circuit the grief that people feel or the grieving that they're engaged in, we are denying them their reality And if we deny people their reality, we have denied them their dignity. And we deny them their dignity, the game's over in this work. So that's what we do every day in public life. So that's why knowing what matters to people becomes so important in this work. So thanks for for raising that. So so I just want to leave you, we've just got about 10 minutes left in the hour. And I want to leave you... um, quickly with some takeaways that you can use in moving forward. And the first one is this, Uh, print and use the practice tracker. And I actually mean that quite literally. Print it out or download it in this day and age. Um, Some people who we work with save it as a screensaver so that they can check where they are all the time. And what you want to do is on a regular basis um, is check your progress. Now, when people are going through our work with us together and learning our work, we have them check their progress every week. And that's a good habit to get into. And then over time, you might be able to do it every few weeks um, or every month. But you want to get you want to develop a habit of checking your progress so that you can feel this sense of grounding that. Barb mentioned that you can feel a sense of possibility and that you can move forward. Second, you want to share it with others and engage them in a conversation, much like we did today. Just like, where are you on this? How did it go? What did you learn from this? What did you take away? Not what's your score? And somehow, if you didn't get five out of 10 or eight out of 10, something's wrong with you. Please don't do that. Instead, Make an entreaty to people to come go on a journey with you, a journey of shared learning, a journey of shared development, right? A a journey of shared co-creation in the community. And when you share this tracker with others, you'll gain allies um, and you build relationships. And as you do that, you'll be able to figure out who to run with and you'll be able to do more work in your community And then you'll be catalyzing and unleashing more chain reactions. And then the last one that's really important is take note of what shifts you're making. Or another way of saying this is 
name your wins, right? The naming process is really critically important here, right? We know that in a lot of work, until you name something, it doesn't fully exist in our consciousness. You wanna make this explicit. You wanna make it concrete. You wanna name it. Now, what you're naming may evolve and change over time as you reflect more, as you make greater discernments, as you learn more, as you gain more experience. That's okay. Keep naming in new ways what you're learning and how you're learning and why that's important to you. But you have to take the time to step back. You know, I always say to folks, if you want to step forward, sometimes you have to step back first and take a step back and notice what you're learning and the shifts that you're making and why they're important to you. Okay. So let me just get some quick thoughts. How did this session go for you? What are you taking away from it yourself? Um, just some really quick, quick, quick thoughts, quick reactions. I think at times the work can seem so um, intangible that it's nice to have something tangible like this to kind of go back and ground and and at times where you don't know where to go or what the next step is being able to kind of center yourself and ask like what's one piece today um or where can i move forward today right i love i love what you just said the last part what can I do today? What's the one thing I can do today, right? And that's fantastic. What else? What other thoughts are you leading with? That? What else do you do you take take away from this? Also, I kind of agree with her that um, it give you some goals and objectives um, to establish and work with. Uh, and then, as she said, from day to day, uh, definitely some goals and objectives to establish for yourself. Great. Thanks. Anyone else? Someone else? Maybe for me, just that this isn't like, you know, it's not a project to finish and then, and then put it up like, okay, we did it. We turned outward. Um, and there's something very, um, energizing about that because despite the fact it's a checklist I don't feel like I now have this other thing that I have to put on my to-do list it's just a way of calibrating myself so I can handle everything else on the checklist and and see what needs to go and see what new things need to be added anyway that's great I love it Pam remember this is a practice not a bunch of techniques and the beauty of about any practice whether it's this your practice of faith your practice of yoga practice of an, instru an instrument, playing an instrument is a practice, is that you can always grow. You can always take on new things. You always face a new piece of music or a new posture or whatever it might be that enables you to take on a new challenge. You always see things in new ways over time. So the practice is always evolving as you're evolving and the world around you is evolving. And so it's something just to continue to grow with. So great. Thanks, Pam. Any other thoughts? Quick reactions, things you're taking away. Muted. Um, I would have liked to have maybe heard a little bit more about people's authentic experiences here. I realize this is for learning, but I'm missing the feeling of connection to more of you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then what I would do is a Katie. Is that how I pronounce it? Yes. Name? Yeah. So as we. As the Institute has other types of virtual events and in-person, I would really encourage you to take part in those and you'll, I think you'll find places to get that greater sense of connection. Okay. So thanks for saying that, appreciate it. Yeah. All right, anyone else? Hi, I jumped in a little late today, but I have been a fan of your work for a long time. So thank you for what you do. Um, are there going to be any in-person workshops or training in 2024? Uh, there, um, 
they're going to be in per some in-person events, which I'm going to mention in a moment. Sorry. <laughs> oh, that's fine. And uh, as you know, they're always regularly scheduled virtual labs and other things, but, but um, keep looking at, um, we haven't scheduled it yet, but keep looking at our newsletter. And uh, when there are ones, we will definitely announce them so you'll know about them. Thank you. Love to see you at one of them. All right. So let me wrap this up. A couple of quick announcements. One is the next virtual, if I can say this, virtual in-person thing is uh, the next part of the new basics webinar series. And it's the last one, at least in this series, we are gonna be announcing some other virtual events, um, which go to Katie's point about being becoming more connected to others who are doing the work and who share a belief that we need to move forward together. Um, but the next new basics webinar is on January 9th at 1 p.m. Eastern time. And it's around the key elements to stay grounded. So this is how can you use different parts of the practice uh, as you're doing the work over time to help you and others you're working with. So it's not just yourself, you and others you're working with stay grounded, stay turned outward, stay focused on what matters to people, um, stay focused on what really matters to, to you um, as you're doing the work over time. And as many of you know, if you've done this work, that it's not easy work to do over time because there are a lot of forces acting against us. So stay tuned for that. Please um, sign up for it and uh, bring other folks with you. Um, and also, these are all archived on our website. So um, encourage people to watch these because we want to spread this practice as far and wide as we possibly can. We're not holding on to it. It's not proprietary. We want to share it with others so that they can uh, take action in their own spheres of influence and their own communities. And then lastly, just to close with, um, on November 14th, we're going to be announcing a new na nationwide campaign called Enough Time to Build. Um, this is going to run through February of 2025. And we're uh, intentionally running it along parallel path to the election season, because we believe that there's a vacuum in public life that it, and that vacuum has been filled by the loudest, most divisive, most acrimonious voices. And that um, and that we need to activate more community leaders and active citizens to come back into the public square together. And that we need to build together if we're gonna move forward and bridge our differences, create a culture of shared responsibility and make community a common enterprise. That talk is good, but it's not enough. We need to actually come together and build together and renew our shared spirit of Americans as builders and doers and innovators and creators. It's, I believe it's part of the DNA of this country. It's part of who we are. I think we've lost it at times and we wanna help reactivate it. Voting's important, but we know, and you probably know that voting alone isn't gonna get us where we need to go as a society right now. And so we want to call people back into public life to fill this vacuum. If you want to bring this campaign to your community, um, there's a, a link in the chat. You can just open it up, send us your name. Someone on our team will be in touch with you. This is going to go on for 15 months. My first stop is in Fresno, California in a couple of weeks. Um, and we're announcing this on November 14th. So Hope you'll be part of it. Well, it's not just a speaking tour. We'll be having online virtual events for people to connect together. We'll be uh, telling stories from the field of people taking action. We'll be dis disseminating tools people can use in their own communities to come together and build together. And so we're hoping to, to activate uh, people across the country so that we can fill this vacuum um, that we're all experiencing today. All right. Thanks for joining us. Um, thanks for being part of this. It's good to see everyone. We hope to see you on January 9th at the next one of these. If you're interested in the Time to Build campaign, let us know um, whether you bring us to your community or not. We want you to be part of it. And we want to go do this together moving forward. 
and bring more people back into community life and fill this vacuum that we face. So in the meantime, uh, be well, stay safe, and, uh, and importantly, be turned outward. So look forward to seeing everyone. Thanks.